The Burmese pythons have dramatically changed the landscape of Florida. It started during the 1990s. U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service reports since then people have imported more than 100,000 snakes into the country as pets. And then Hurricane Andrew leveled a python breeding facility near the Everglades, sending those snakes into the wild. In 2006, the first python nest was discovered, and just five years later, the population of smaller wildlife dropped by 99%. Sonica Dange witnessed one of the most successful Burmese python hunters in action in the dead of night. During these hot summer months, Dusty Crum, the wildman, says the most opportune time to hunt these Burmese pythons is at night. That's because these snakes spend the majority of their day cooling off in the waters. At night is when they come out to hunt themselves. My name's Dusty Crum. They call me the wild man. Armed with only a flashlight, his bare hands and bare feet, Dusty Crum has spent the last four years hunting pythons double his size. They blend in so well to this dead brush. Dusty Crum is one of 25 hired hunters by the South Florida Water Management District, crawling down the National Park from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. in a truck rigged with 360-degree lights. I saw some shining. Tonight, after about three fruitless hours. Hey, man. Where you at? Crum meets up with three other python hunters. <laughs> All these like, big branches look like pythons. But with more eyes on the road. Yo, stop, stop. It now takes less than two hours for a spotting. Got one? Yep. It usually takes Crum an average of five minutes to spot the python, wrestle it to the ground, and bag it. Where is it at? We can't let this thing get away. But tonight, this massive snake is putting up the fight of its life. I got Woo, son. Yeah. That's a big snake. It's snake number 223 that's been caught in the program, and its massive size has now re-energized the group. Woo! Yeah. Days later, that snake yeah. at the weigh-in will measure 14 feet. Dusty says this is one of the largest snakes he's caught live on camera, second only to a 16-foot, 10-inch snake he caught. Oh my God, someone take it off. Perfect. A few months ago, Crum wrestled this monster to the ground, Inside, 73 eggs. One of those times where I was probably a little bit nervous on that on that one for sure. Crum says those moments make the long hours of monotonous scenery in the dead of night worth it. Actually, last night I saw a raccoon out here, and it was the first coon I've seen out here in like four or five years. It's nice to see some wildlife, some other thing, you know, kind of returning to the area. And just a few hours later, the night ended with yet another snake. Woo! Number two, baby. Crum has never caught more than three snakes on any given night, which makes number 224 a rare find. Well, I might go to the casino tonight, boys. Despite tonight's success, most experts say they'll never be able to completely eradicate these snakes. It's a battle we'll be fighting for years. We just got to keep going and keep fighting and, and do what we can, you know. Doing nothing is not the solution, so we're... We're taking them one snake at a time. These python hunters have until September to catch as many snakes as they can. But this year's pilot program was so successful that there's no doubt this project will continue for years to come. And Dusty tells me he's planning to continue hunting pythons for the rest of his life. In the Everglades, Sonica Dange, WPBF 25 News. Oh, well, Sonica could continue to wear a python. Oh, my. I have all new respect for her after that. But she did that in one take. <laughs> By the way, we need to tell you what Dusty's day job is. He tends to orchids, and he actually has his own shop. Quite a contrast. <laughs>